I've been playing Voice of Cards because you have no time to game. Welcome to the next video in my When the Credits Roll series, a collection of videos where I only review a game once I've actually seen the credits roll. So you can have some faith that I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> if you're a follower of the indie gaming scene, you have no doubt seen the explosion of card based games. All sorts of games have come out using cards, but mostly roguelike deck builders. <laughs> I believe Slay the Spire is kind of to blame for this. <laughs> but in this strange new world, Square Enix decided to release a card game of its own, but that's very different to all the others as it uses the concept of cards for aesthetics with everything being a card from the character portraits to what we'd normally be like a movement grid in a normal game. But it doesn't actually use the cards in battle like most of the other card games do. So there's no deck or anything like that. Voice of Cards is surprisingly a very conventional turn-based game with random encounters and everything you'd expect. Just with the board game, just with the game using these cards for look and feel. So, Voice of Cards, Isle of Dragons Raw, was released October the 28th, 2021 for PS4, Switch and PC, and has since seen a release on Android and iOS in 2023. It was developed by Alien and published by Square Enix and has since had two sequels and it took me roughly 11 hours to beat. The story sees us take on the role of Ash. A dragon has awoken and the queen of the Isle of Bliss, Nilia, has offered a great reward for slaying the beast. So Ash, being in need of money with his monster pile Ma, decided to take on the task. But well, it's definitely a tale with more behind it than it first appears. With frequent run-ins with the goody two-shoes of the Ivory Order, magical mind-bending forests and more. The story definitely exceeded what I was expecting from the initial setup, with the stakes really ramping up as we went on. And the characters that I th thought at first I wasn't going to enjoy, but I did soon come to really care for them. So, as always, before talking about the meat and bows of the games, the battle system, we have a look at what's going on outside of the battle. This is a very traditional JRPG with a world map of sorts, towns in between, but Voice of Cards' big twists is the cards. Basically, the world map has a fog of war. Um, all the cards are face down, and as you move to each new card, the next ones flip over to reveal new towns, paths, mountains, and more. Um, with some cards, such as mountains, being impassable. But in the towns themselves, which you can go into, uh, they're usually all flipped over already, and you can see everything that's going on. Now, some of the card tiles have various things happening. Um, in towns, this could be a tile of a person you could talk to, or a shop you can enter, or even the gambling den. And there are often story segments that play out when you reach certain points. On the world map, events can happen as well. Some of these are scripted tiles, um, some are random as you're walking around. And remember as well, it's also random encounters, so sometimes when you step on them, you're going to get a battle. There's also dungeons, which are basically kind of like the world map, but more contained. Now, there is a cool little feature that makes movement a little easier. You can select it in most areas. You just go to a card that you've already flipped over and you can just jump to it, saving walking on backwards and forwards and all that sort of stuff. Um, and it avoids doing the random encounters <laughs> on tiles you've already been on, like cards you've already been over. In the towns as well, you also have the fast travel coach. Basically jumps you from town to town as the world map is actually a collection of several maps that you go through. We each with a few towns each. While it all comes across as very traditional, with even a card-based gambling mini game, which I honestly only tried once and never went back to, 
There's a surprising amount going on in the world and lots of secrets and side quests to find, like any good RPG. Now that we've dealt with traveling the world, what is a battle like in Voice of Cards? Well, first things first, when a battle screen starts, you get this incredible looking game tray with cards, dice and tokens appearing on the screen. And then you get your character cards and enemy cards placed down. Characters in this are very simple. They have HP, attack, defense, and a speed stat. It's all affected by equipping weapons, armor, and accessories. And each of you guys can bring a few skills into battle from the list they've unlocked. They also have some passive skills that are permanent effects, such as resistance to elemental types, etc. Overall, a character is actually quite simple. But choosing your preferred setup of skills could make you rack your brain a bit. Based on your character's speed, the turn will play out. Sometimes having a random effect that can be positive or negative appearing at the start of the turn. Um, such as everyone's attack is increased for that turn. On your turn, you select one of your equipped skills, but they all have a cost, which is gems. At the start of each of your character's turn, you're given a gem and some skills have a zero cost which allows you to save gems for bigger attacks you can also pass as in like skip the character's turn so we watch our skill and watch it play out now this is all very simple and you can usually even calculate the damage that's going to be done as it's as simple as an attack plus whatever buff the skill gives you minus the target's defense but there are little hitches such as critical hits elemental resistances and weaknesses do come into play. So if you can, if you know the enemy's weakness, you can pretty much gauge how much damage the attack is going to do. Um, every skill, like I said, has an enemy of type, and every enemy has a weakness and a strength. So by trial and error, you'll figure out what the enemies are weak and strong to. You can also use items that you collect. There's quite a few different types. But I pretty much only ever used healing potions or gem-given items and you can only carry 30 items at a time. Overall, it feels quite traditional and simple, but surprisingly fun, especially after you've got all the characters, because there's more than the three that initially appears. So you can only take three with you into battle, but you can switch them out outside of battle easily. And they're all quite varied in skills, meaning you can build a party that plays in the way that you enjoy playing. Once a battle is actually finished you obviously get your xp and your gold and then sometimes you get a treasure but you don't just get given a treasure in this game oh no three treasures appear on screen and you've got to select one and then it shows you all three what was in each of the treasure chests and you get the one you're given so you might get the worst item you might get the best one it's a fun little extra for the end of some of the battles so what is actually good about voice of cards well, firstly, visually, it's very interesting. The whole board game theme, theming is such a fun idea. And after a bit of a rocky start, I really got invested in the characters and the story. It's just a nudge off generic. And it met, that's what makes it interesting. And it has random counters. Whoop, whoop. But with good, always comes a bad. And in this case, the game is a little slow, mostly due to the animations. Not story, as in like actual moving around and such is a bit slow and when you move it takes a second to flip the next cards over when the battle loads it's a very nice spectacle but honestly it just takes a little bit too long so as before given my final thoughts what do the critics think and we'll look at the ever trustworthy metacritic for the switch version in this case as that's the what i played it on and we see the game gets a 76 and an 8.0 from users, or 80, which I actually feel is a fair score. The critics score, like I said, is, is fair. I feel it's because the game isn't genre defining, but what it is, is an interesting interpretation of classic JRPG arch archetypes. From turn-based battles, random encounters, and a sense of exploration, it feels like an old school title with an inter interesting coat of paint covering it. So my final rating is actually must play.